Hey everybody, YouTube's Noodle here, and um, as you can see, no picture today. Um, I'm just I'm trying something different today, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to read a book. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Read a book on the internet. It's kind of kind of unheard of on YouTube. At least I haven't heard of it, at least. And yeah, so sit back. Sit back, listen, enjoy, and um, I hope you like it. Hopefully my voice doesn't annoy you too much, but yeah. Um, today I'm going to read, and in the future I'm going to continue reading up to the last chapter, which I won't post up because I'll probably get copyrighted or some shit. Hopefully I don't get copyrighted for this, but because that would pretty that would suck, but yeah. Um, and I am reading Aragon by Christopher Paolini and published by Doubleday. And um, it's a great book, absolutely great book. I recommend you buy it um, if you get the chance. But so yeah, and and yeah, so hope you all enjoy. And where's the fucking start? And okay, here we go. Prologue: Shade of Fear. Wind howled through the night, carrying a scent that would change the world. A tall shade lifted his head and sniffed the air. He looked human, except for his crimson hair and maroon eyes. He blinked in surprise. The message had been correct. They were here. Or was it a trap? He weighed the odds and then said icily, spread out, hide behind the trees and bushes, stop whoever is coming or die. Around him shuffled twelve urgles with short swords and round iron shields painted with black symbols. They resembled men with bowed legs and thick, brutish arms made for crushing. A pair of twisted horns grew above their small ears. The monsters hurried into the, into the brush, grunting as they hid. Soon the rustling quieted, and the forest was silent again. The shade peered around a thick tree and looked up the trail. It was too dark for any human to see, but for him the faint moonlight was like sunshine streaming between the trees. Every detail was clear and sharp to his searching gaze. He remained unnaturally quiet, a long pale sword in his hand. A wire thin scratch curved down the blade. The weapon was thin enough to slip between a pair of ribs, yet stout enough to hack through the hardest armour. The Urgles could not see as well as the shade. They groped like blind beggars, fumbling with their weapons. An owl screeched, cutting through the silence. No one relaxed until the bird flew past. Then the monster shivered in the cold night. One snapped a twig with his heavy boot. The shade hissed in anger, and the Urgles shrank back, motionless. He suppressed his distance, his, dis his distaste. They smelled like fetid meat and turned away. They were tools, nothing more. The shade forced back his impatience as the minutes became hours. The scent must have wafted for far ahead of its owners. He did, not, he did not let the urgles get up or warm themselves. He denied himself those luxuries too and stayed behind the tree watching the trail. Another gust of wind rushed through the forest. The smell was stronger this time. Excited, he lifted a thin lip in a snarl. Get ready, he whispered, his whole body vibrating. The tip of his sword moved in small circles. It had taken many plots and much pain to bring himself to this moment. It would not do to lose the control now. Eyes brightened under the Urgle's thick brows and the creatures gripped their weapons tighter. Ahead of them, the shade heard a clink as something hard struck a loose stone. Faint smudges emerged from the darkness and advanced down the trail. Three white horses, with riders cantered towards the ambush, their heads held high and proud, their coats rippling in the moonlight like liquid silver. On the first horse was an elf with pointed ears and elegantly slanted eyebrows. His build was slim but strong, like a rapier. A powerful bow was slung on his back, a sword pressed against his side opposite a quiver of arrows fletched with swan feathers. The last rider had the same fair face and angled features as the other. He carried a long spear in his right hand and a white dagger at his belt. A helm of extraordinary craftsmanship wrought with amber and gold rested on his head. Between these two rode a raven-haired elven lady who surveyed her surroundings with poise. Framed by long black locks, her deep eyes shone with a driving force. Her clothes were unadorned, yet her beauty was undiminished. At her side was a sword, and on her back was a long bow with a quiver. She carried in her lap a pouch that sat frequent, that she frequently looked at, as if to reassure herself that it was still there. 
One of the elves spoke quietly, but the shade could not hear what was said. The lady answered with obvious authority, and her guards switched places. The one wearing the helm took the lead, shifting his spear to a readier grip. They passed the shade's hiding place and with the first few oogles, urgles without suspicion. The shade was already savouring his victory when the wind changed direction and swept towards the elves, heavy with the ogle's stench. The horses snorted with alarm and tossed their heads, the riders stiffened, eyes flashing from side to side, then wheeled around their mounts and wheeled around their mounts and galloped away. The lady's horse surged forward, leaving her guards far behind, forsaking their hiding. The ogle stood and released a stream of black arrows. The shade jumped out from behind the tree, raised his right hand and shouted, Garjla! A red bolt flashed from his palm towards the elven lady, illuminating the trees with a bloody light. It struck her steed, and the horse toppled with a high-pitched squeal, ploughing into the ground chest first. She leapt off the animal with inhuman speed, landed lightly, and then glanced back for her guards. The Urgle's deadly arrows quickly brought down the two elves. They fell from noble horses, blood pooling in the dirt. As, as the Urgles rushed to the slain elves, the shade screamed, After her! She is the one I want! The monsters grunted and rushed down the trail. A cry tore from the elf's lips, and she saw her and she saw her dead companions. She took a step toward them, then cursed her enemies and bounded into the forest. While the ergles crashed through the trees, the shade climbed a piece of granite that jutted above the above them. From his perch, he could see all of the surrounding forest. He raised his hand and uttered, "Boet Estlari." At a quarter mile section of the forest, exploded into flames. Grimly, he burnt one section after another until there was a ring of fire, a half league across the am and around the ambush site. The flames looked like molten, like a molten crown resting in on the forest. Satisfied, he watched the ring carefully in case it should falter. The band of fire thickened, contracting the area the Urgles had to search. Suddenly, the shade heard the shouts and a coarse scream. Through the trees, he saw three of his charges fall in a pyre, mortally wounded. He caught a glimpse of the elf running in the, from the remaining ergles. She fled towards the craggy piece of granite at a tremendous speed. The shade examined the ground twenty feet below, then jumped and landed nimbly in front of her. She skidded around and sped back on the tr to the trail. Black ergle blood dripped from her sword, staining the pouch in her hand. The horned monsters came out of the forest and hemmed her in, blocking the only escape routes. Her head whipped around as she tried to find her way out. Seeing none, she drew herself up with, a re with regal disdain. The shade approached her with a raised hand, allowing himself to enjoy her helplessness. Get her. As the ogle surged forward, the elf pulled open the pouch, reached into it, and then let it drop to the ground. In her hands was a large sapphire stone that reflected the angry light of the fires. She raised it over her head, lips forming frantic words. Desperate, the shade barked, Garzla! The ball of red flame sprang from his hand and flew towards the elf, fast as an arrow, but he was too late. A flash of emerald light briefly illuminated the forest and the stone vanished. Then the red fire smote her and she collapsed. The shade howled in rage and stalked forward, flinging his sword at a tree. It passed halfway through the trunk where it stuck, quivering. He shot nine bolts of energy from his palm, which killed the ergles instantly, then ripped his sword free and strode to the elf. Prophecies of revenge, spoken in a wretched language only he knew, rolled from his tongue. He clenched his thin hands and glared at the sky. The cold stars stared black, unwinking. Otherworldly watchers, disgust curled, up, curled his lip before he turned back to the unconscious elf. Her beauty, which have, her beauty, which would have entranced any mortal man, held no charm for him. He confirmed that the stone was gone, then retrieved his horse from this hiding place among the trees. After tying the elf onto the saddle, he mounted the charger and made his way out of the woods. He quenched the fires in his path, but left the rest to burn.